All right, so I haven't been able to do many of the projects I've been wanting to do lately, but I did finish this knife. Um, so this is a kitchen knife I made for my mom. And here's the kitchen knife I made I made for her uh, three years ago, which is kind of nuts to think about. It's been that long. Uh, but yeah, so the original one I made for her is just, it's Vanix. And I chose Vanix because it's, it's, it's super rust resistant and it holds an edge for a while, for a long time. But the problem she was having with this knife was that when she did, when she used it to cut bones, uh, the edge would flatten out, so it would lose its sharpness like pretty quickly, and then it would just have to. She, would, you know, you could still cut with the profile, but um, the sharpness would be gone. So I told her because I, I, I happen to like K390 a lot at this particular moment. I told her I can make her another knife in K390. And um, I asked her what she wanted and, you know, like anything, if there's anything in particular, I gave her a choice for, for the handle material too. Um, I said, you know, I could do it in anything you want, you know, G10, whatever. And uh, she wanted lignum vitae, which is right now is what I want. I kind of pushed for lignum vitae a little bit, but um, the reason she wanted lignum vitae is because I guess it turns out in Mexico, it's called um, Palo Santo. And it's something that's actually well known out there. And I guess you can use it for remedies too and stuff like that. You would have to look it up, I suppose. But um, when she knew it was that, she, she said, yeah, she wanted this particular wood. And I was actually able to find a very nice piece of lignum pate, like super nice. And you see that? A lot of feathering and lines. And um, what I did with this, was, so this was a bookmarked piece and it had, you know, two squares, two scales. And I put it at an angle so I can get most of the, most of the lines, the dark area here, right in this corner on both sides, which is what I tried to do so that it would just run off from here down. So you can see the lines start here and they all go down. Like that. Same thing here. And um, this particular wood, I told her also, I mean, whenever she wanted for this thing to change color, that she can just go outside and put it in the sun for a few minutes. And this, mainly the white areas, uh, not so much the, blue, the dark brown, but those areas would look like, like this. And I still have a patch, where is it on this side, I think, that isn't exactly, see, as green. But all that would turn green, even the brown actually, but not not as, hmm, well yeah, even the brown. But yeah, so it would turn and look green basically like this. So whenever she wants to, she can do that, but she hasn't, so I'm, I'm still leaving it up to her. So when I do carry it outside, I just put a napkin over this so she can, it's up to her. Uh, besides that, she wanted something that she can just put a lot of weight on, just go like this to it and just chop something. And for that, I just like crowned this a little bit on the top, on the, took the corners off, rounded it out a bit up here, and I did the point down. So there's a little bit of curvature here and then up a little bit, and then that's mostly aesthetic, but curvature down like that. So it should, so it's easy to do, unlike this one, which is straight. There's not much of a chance of this, this tip going into your hand. You put a lot of force on there. Um, same thing with this, a little bit of curvature there. If you, if you have to push down or whatever, there's a little bit of leverage, you can push down with that curvature at the end of this handle. Um, besides that, I spent some amount of time on this curvature here. And I'm not a chef and I, I don't cook a lot. When I do cook, it's basically the same thing. I cook, I just chicken and vegetables basically stuff like that so um so i'm not an expert in this but to me what i did was this felt right to me so i got it so when it does rock the pivot points about here you have all this to cut things with and see it doesn't move much when you do cut so so i found that it pivot pretty nice um i curved it and recurved it and then um finally found a point where it found it felt nice and um so yeah so that's what i did for this curvature and then the handle itself um just grip wise and all that 
not much to it just like a, a coke bottle kind of kind of deal and um it does once you have it in your hand it's like basically it, it's, it is locked in one position but um i did put these little these little divots there just so in case for whatever reason if you want to put a finger there it's right in the center of the handle uh the weight on this is right right there so when you if you do do a pinch grip you're basically holding it there and you don't you don't feel much of of anything when you are holding it in a pinch grip so yeah um, I do think it's a, an improvement to this, which was three years ago. Hopefully, hopefully it's a, an improvement. But um, I think it came out came out overall nice. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, the the main the main problem with K three ninety is is all this this rust. But eventually it'll it'll patina. It'll get to a point where it's, it's slightly easier. Um, just from experience, I haven't done any tests, but just from experience, once it patinas completely, it's a little bit easier to maintain. Um, and but yeah, the rust is is part of part of K three ninety. But uh, she doesn't have the same problem. She's already cut a bunch of um, bones with this thing, and it's like still crazy sharp, still crazy sharp, and it's it's gone through quite a bit of bones already. So beautiful, beautiful edge stability, beautiful edge retention, uh, sharp reten sharpness reten uh, retention. So so yeah, uh, and it's it's just overall tough. So yeah, beautiful in every single way except yep, rust resistance. But yeah, this should be fine. So yeah, uh, any any questions, suggestions? Like always, let me know. All right. Let me see a good. Uh, there you go.